Hello, today Truth Detective, also known as the Monochrome Man, is going to be telling you some things about being a YouTuber. You know, this is where I started. I was sitting over here in front of the fucking curtain behind me. And I was pondering life from many different angles, you know. And I used to be a Finnish man. But it all kind of changed in the process of becoming this YouTube character of Truth Detective. You know, it's been a ride. A real freaking ride. Yeah. And I thought about today that how could I really make you understand what my channel is all about? And how could I really make you understand and be more interested in what I do. And I realized that, holy shit, most of the YouTubers I used to watch, they just had their face on the freaking camera. They talked for hours about different subjects. They had the subjects downright, but they didn't have special effects, they didn't have amazing voice, they didn't look amazing, usually. They were pretty ordinary in many ways, but they still got a huge following. And I thought, why is that? Why did they become so No. And I kind of realized that what unifies these people is that their channel really wasn't about themselves at all. And I have tried uh, to do this kind of YouTube channel for myself. And I don't know if I have accomplished what I have been trying to do, because at least in this moment, in this current moment, we have to become really present in this present moment, you know. We're gonna make it simple now. Simplicity. Black and white. Monochrome man. We have to become present in this present moment. And just feel, feel, feel. We have to feel what is going on in our mind. We have to notice that nowadays people are so busy. They don't have the time. But I feel that really people want that kind of moment in their life where they can just, you know, let go and just be like in the present fucking moment. I feel that I found a different style of living in, ch in just these few past years, or maybe even just this past year. I slowed it down a lot, because I feel that the modern world is just too fast for me, you know. I have a pocket watch over here, an old one, and you can see that. It could be used in some hypnotic thing. But I'm not gonna do that for you now. But in the past, when everything was black and white, everything was also more downpaced. People synchronized to each other more. They didn't have to use technology to be somewhere. They used each other they talked, sometimes for long times. And the work that they did was more focused, maybe better. And that's what I want to accomplish in my future content on my YouTube channel. I want to make you feel a certain kind of patience and focus in the videos.
Breed man. Like a blast from the past, you know. We can imagine. We have a mind. We can do imagination stuff. And we can imagine this train. It's an old steam train. And it's rolling on these railroad tracks to this railway station. And there's a gentleman with this kind of hat on his head. And a walking cane. A really fine man. Check his pocket watch while waiting for the train. Concludes that it's still five more minutes to get to the train. So, starts a conversation with the lady that is on the railway station with him. And they talk about what the future will hold for mankind and for the world in general. But they don't even use those terms. Because those terms are too modern. They talk about what will happen in their destination. If the train will be robbed or not. The man says that I believe that the robbers nowadays, you know, they have more stylist ways than in these olden days. And the lady has to agree to that. And the lady says that I used to be working in a bank and there was one robbery. They came in with the freaking tank. The funny fact is that tanks didn't even exist. It was World War I actually when first tanks came around. They were funny in their shape. And do you know Warhammer? Have you ever heard about that? I used to paint these little figurines and build these Warhammer tanks. I had space marines. I had Necrons. I didn't have the tall, tall Tau army. I liked that army because it was orange, futuristic, sci-fi. My mind latched onto it when I saw it for offer in some store. Warhammer. Sci-fi. I was like, wow. And I'm gonna tell this other story from my past. The man just tells a story to the lady. Yeah, I used to be the Warhammer. The steam train rolls along. They hop in the train. They get in the same cabin. I don't know why. And the man just tells that when I went to this one bookstore, there was this book called Hyperion, Hyperion by Dan Siemens. A sci-fi book about seven, seven different characters. The most complex, the most masterful sci-fi book ever written. And it was written in the 90s. I think 91. Correct me if I'm wrong. You have Wikipedia. But these guys on the steam train, they don't have one. But the man has the Hyperion book with him. Grabs it out of a suitcase to show it for the lady. And tells to the lady that Hey lady, have you heard about this book? It's really good. And the best thing about this book is how complex the structure of this book is. You can't find anything like this on the internet. There's no way. This is masterful. And it was written before the time of the internet. There was some internet, but it was slower, you know. It's like a snail. And they talk about it. Do you know what happens? The train doesn't get dropped. They get to their destination. All their worries were... They didn't have any reason 
for the worries. You shouldn't worry either. I notice in modern times that many people are so busy, but on top of that, they worry too much. They just worry, 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 or worry all the time. When really, you don't have to worry. Worry is kind of like this. You are cold. You are freezing. And you start worrying about your health. Can I take this freaking freezing cold? Do I have the right shoes? Like, can I survive this? Where can I find warmth? You find the warmth and then you start worrying. What do those people think of me, you know? You have to understand that a worrying mind creates a worrying life. That's a great quote by me. You can check more of them on my portfolio page. You can also check my art. I'm an artist, you know. It's pretty great to be one. But there are downsides to being an artist. For example, poverty. Well, not poverty, but you know, being an artist and making money out of it, because it's so much work, it's kind of hard, you know? Yeah. I bet when Dan Simmons wrote that freaking book, he didn't wrote it because he thought that this was gonna make me more money than becoming a doctor. But he didn't become a doctor. He wrote that book and it influenced me for the rest of my life. <coughs> it's the best sci-fi book ever. And that is a fan comment. I want to tell you something about fans. Fans are great to have. I've noticed that. But then again, my fans are not writing Hyperion level fiction. You know, it's great to have fans, but they are not writing books like Hyperion, you know. I haven't even seen one to wear Fedora hats. And that's easy to do. Well, it's not even easy, it's pretty hard. You can say that in modern times there's also much clutter. Have you heard about minimalism ever? Me neither. It didn't exist in the past, minimalism. Uh, minimalism came about because we had to simplify. The mind was becoming too cluttered, you know? The mind was becoming too busy. The mind was becoming too kind of caught up. And we had to, in the arts, create these rooms that were so clear, that were so, like, open, that had a couple of blocks of, like, black granite, you know. And this was minimalism. And it was great. But then we kind of realized that, that minimalism usually lacks color. Does color add complexity? Well, no, it doesn't add complexity. But it might challenge the things that are to be harder, to blend to each other than with monochrome or just black. And that's what many people opt for in their life. The doing of no choice through wearing all black, for example. I stopped wearing black. I don't like black. I don't like black clothes. Uh, they depress you. Uh, I like grey. Because grey is formal. And grey is some something you can wear when you want to get across to people. When you want to socialize. I have a grey suit, a grey shirt, a grey hat. Great pants. It's great when you want to socialize because it doesn't pull so much attention to itself. But then again, 
you might socialize with the complete wrong people. This lady that the gentleman started talking to had a very fine hat and a very fine, you know, clothing choice either way. Very colorful, you know, purples and reds, maybe some yellows and white, you know, it was beautiful. The lady was amazing. And the guy just started to talk about him, uh, to her about science fiction, because he liked science fiction so much. It was his freaking thing, you know. He couldn't fucking help it, you know. Yeah. You wonder about that. That's the downside of being a fan. So, then the lady asked the man, when they got on the station, the arrival and the destination of their trip, that, hey man, do you even think that you're going to talk about this subject? Did you have a plan? And the man said that, of course, I did have a plan. I always have a plan. 